Versatility. That's not a word that we talk about a lot here in this store in regards to rods because we have this tendency to kind of dive down rabbit holes and really dissect things to the smallest little minute difference, right? And find the absolute best rod for a chatterbait and the best rod for a crankbait and the best rod for a jig. But what if you don't have the luxury of taking 482 rods with you every time you go fishing? What if you're from a kayak and you need four great rods to be super versatile? Or what if you're fishing from the shore and you just want one rod that can do as many different things as possible? Today, we are going to break down my five favorite rods for versatility. These are the most versatile rods in my mind. We're gonna do it on two levels. We're gonna do it on the bougie level, right Jeff? We yeah. gotta stay high. And then we'll do it on a you know less expensive level. So if you guys are ready to dive down the rabbit hole of versatile rods, let's go. Welcome to the Hook of Tackle. The Hook of Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hook Up also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hook of Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hook of Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku on Instagram. Of course, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. What's up, Jeffrey the King? This should be a good one. This is gonna be good. So yesterday I was helping someone in store and they were a kayak angler. Okay. And they were kind of starting down the path of bouginess, yeah. right? And they wanted to assemble some really good rods. And he brought up a really good point. It's a point that I talk about a lot and it is you know, I only have so much space. I need rods that can do a lot of different things, mm. right? And, you know, in, in our world, we have this tendency to, you know, f get the exact right rod and reel for every single bait, Yeah. right? Like, oh, this is my 110 rod, and this is my Edo Shiner rod, and this is my Pointer 78 rod, and this is my, you know, walking topwater bait rod, on and on and on and on, where, you know, a lot of the world, we. Th we have to find a rod that can do all those things, mm -hmm. right? And we'll see questions a lot when we talk about rods, like, hey, what's a great rod to throw, you know, a, a spinnerbait and a chatterbait, yeah. or, you know, a topwater and a jig, or mm -hmm. like random things sometimes that don't even make any sense. But when you break it down, you know, if you're going to fish a pond, maybe you want to throw a topwater, and then maybe there's a patch of toys, you want to pitch a worm, and then, you know, maybe you just want to throw a crankbait, like, you kind of need a rod to do a bunch of different stuff, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, today we are gonna talk about the rods that I feel are the most versatile rods. And these are rods that I've pulled out of my own lineup because I have personal experience with them. And we'll talk about why I love them, what they're good at, and, you know, hopefully shed some light on versatility. And then we'll do another rod guide, maybe next week, Jeff, where we can kind of break down the opposite. Like if we really wanna micro dissect oh, the boy. best rod for every single little technique, yeah. right? But that's gonna take us, that'll be a 10 hour live yeah, streaming sure. episode, yep. right? So yeah, you guys can watch that while you sleep. So <laughs> here we go, let's dive into versatility. So what I'm looking for in a versatile rod is obviously just exactly what the name means. I'm looking for a rod that I can do a bunch of different stuff on. And these rods that we're gonna talk about, these aren't rods that I bought to be that. These are rods that over the course of using them, they have turned into that, mm. right? And I find that there are just certain rods that I reach for all the time, Yeah. right? So, you know, maybe it has this tight on it now, but I wanna throw this and eh, I wanna throw it on this rod, mm -hmm. right? Because it either handles it well, or it's fun, or it's light, or it's the most sensitive, or whatever the reason is, okay? so. Let's let's start out. We're gonna start out with dropping stuff. We're gonna start out with my absolute favorite single most versatile rod for me. 
and it's a rod that we talk about all the time, and that is a Destroyer P5 Mad Bull. Now, this is going to come into the category of the most versatile all-around reaction rod for me. So this is a rod, if you watch any of our fishing videos, I'm using this pretty much in every single video that we ever shoot. You can throw a square bill on this. You can throw a chatterbait on this. You can throw a buzz bait on this. You can throw a walking topwater bait on this. You can do so many different things. Basically, if it is reaction, you can throw it on the Mad Bull. What's great about the Mad Bull is A, it's light. Okay, it's a relatively short length, it's seven foot, so it's a great one for fishing from the boat. It's a great one from fishing from the shore. It's not too long or too short. It's kind of just that perfect kind of versatile length, right? <laughs> and what's great about Destroyer, and this is gonna be a trend in pretty much all of these rods that I talk about and all these brands, the way they build these blanks, the graphite, instead of just running one direction, it's kind of a cross weave graphite. So what that does is it kind of gives the rod two actions in one, in a way. It has a initial action and then it has a deeper bend after a fish is hooked. So a lot of times when you kind of see the rod and you're like, okay, you know, it's got a nice, nice bend to it at the tip. But when you really put the rod under load and it really loads in on a fish, you notice that it, it absorbs deeper into the blank, more like a parabolic rod without being like a whippy parabolic rod, right? So this is just one of those really fun rods to fish. I really enjoy it. And what I find with this rod, I have a tendency, I think I'm gonna drop a lot of baits today. Oh, a thousand. I, I picked a bad spot to put rods. Let me go fast. Here you go. Oh, man. We should, we should make a pile on. Whatever I drop, we'll, we'll give away at the end. Oh, God. So here's kind of like my one-two punch. I can adjust the reels on my rods to make this rod do different things. So for instance, if I'm gonna throw, you know, a square bill, for instance, you know, or a, a medium diving crankbait or something like that, I can throw it on my normal, you know, 14, 16, 18, 20 pound fluoro. But if I'm gonna throw, you know, maybe a, a buzz bait or, you know, some something through grass or something, I can throw braid on it and I can totally change it. I can also use this as like a walking topwater rod, right? So I'm gonna throw like a full size kick knocker or a shower blows 125, something like that. Then I could do this, tie a leader, and I've got that. So, you know, having two of these, I can pretty much accomplish everything without having to change my reel. If I had one, you might have to bounce the reel back and forth from, you know, something that's good for topwater and something that's good for underneath. But, you know, generally speaking, uh, this is the most versatile all-around rod, in my opinion, for anything reaction. It really shines at heavier reaction stuff. So it's really gonna shine at like half ounce, five eighths ounce, three quarters. That's what this rod wants to do. It can absolutely throw a three eighth ounce, but for normal stuff and for me, I'm mostly fishing like half ounce, five eighths, three quarter anyways, so this rod is perfect. Now, as a lighter alternative, rod to that. So if you're saying, I never really throw five eighths, three quarter, I'm throwing mostly, you know, three eighths and half ounce stuff. This is a very close second to that. And this is the Steez AGS moving versatile rod. I'm in love with this rod as well. For me, this is a better rod for lighter, more finesse reaction stuff. The Mad Bull is better, just kind of all around heavier reaction stuff. So if you're throwing, you know, junior size topwaters, smaller square bills, you know, 1.0 type stuff, 1.5 can go either way, right? Then the Steez AGS is amazing. And for the same reason, it has almost the same exact action. It's got the light tip, but then when you really lay into it, the rod bends when you need it to bend. So this is kind of how I utilize it, the Mad Bull for all my heavier stuff, the Steez AGS for the lighter stuff. So depending on how you're fishing, one of those two might be perfect. And then of course, if you need a more budget friendly, you know, the Mad Bull is gonna set you back $4.99, the Steez $5.99. So if you want something that comes in in the, you know, between the two and $300 range, you can't go wrong with a Levante Extreme Mission Type F or the Diablo Spec R, either of those. They're virtually the same rod, just different lengths. 
I went with the Extreme Mission Type F uh, just because it's a rod that maybe has slightly more versatility even, because I've seen guys even use this rod to throw a jig and different things by changing the line. But again, it's gonna have that more kind of parabolic bend, but still a lot of power. And I think that's key when we're talking about a rod that can do a lot of stuff, is it still needs to have enough power so that when you go to a 2.0 square bill or you go to a buzz bait or something that has a little more weight and needs a little more oomph, you still have it. So this would be a great, less expensive option to start. All right, jumping in to what I feel is probably the second most important, like all around most versatile rod. This is a traditional, fast action rod designed for like jig and worm fishing. Okay, so traditionally, if, if someone was coming in in the bass fishing world, like I just need a, a rod to do everything. I need to throw a worm and a jig, maybe a spinner bait, like that kind of stuff. You're looking for like a seven foot medium heavy fast action type rod, right? Is what we're looking for. So this is the rod that's super blown me out of the water. And this is the 7.3 medium heavy Steez AGS. It's even called the utility player. So it's really basically got versatile kind of yeah. right in, in the name, right? Name. So here's the reason why I love this rod. It is the perfect length. I, I feel that something between seven and seven and a half is probably the best like all around length. So it's at the perfect length to where it's, it's long enough if you're from a boat, it's short enough if you're from a kayak or shore. It has a really nice tip to it. So it's really fast. It's incredibly sensitive. But again, when you really load into it, it has some give to it. So while it's designed for throwing bottom contact stuff, you know, a Texas rig worm, a light jig, that kind of stuff, this is a sick rod for throwing a spinner bait. It's a great rod for throwing a, a smaller swim bait, like a skinny dipper, a little Kitek, a spark shad, right? These types of things. And these are, these are things that we're doing all the time out here. So if you're throwing a lot of, you know, jig and worm stuff in a, you know, quarter ounce, three eighth ounce, maybe half ounce on the heavy side. So, you know, a worm in a three eighth ounce Texas rig weight, right? Three eighth ounce or half ounce little jig with a trailer, three eighths, half ounce spinner bait, all those things, this rod is so dope. So it gives you the sensitivity and the fastness that you need for the bottom contact, but it also gives you, it's just, it's so light, it weighs nothing. It gives you a ton of versatility. And again, you can combo this up. So, you know, I love this rod, I, I own two of them. I do the same thing I do on my Mad Bull. I have one spooled up with fluoro and one spooled up with braid so that I kind of get a one-two punch as needed. And that seems to work really good for me. If you were just gonna do one, I'd probably just tell you just go straight fluoro because that's mostly what you're gonna use this rod for is gonna be bottom contact stuff. Now, let's really fast, Jeff, talk about what some of these rod terms mean. Cause I've been throwing some things out like fast, moderate, right? Medium, heavy, heavy, all these things. We've covered it before, but let's just run down this really fast and make sure we're understanding terms and what they mean and how they apply to these rods, mm -hmm. okay? so. First of all, when we are talking about the actual weight of the rod, we're using things like, man, it's so light, right? Or it's really heavy, right? So I think you guys get that, right? We're gonna use those same words, heavy, medium, heavy, medium, medium, light, light, to describe the power of the rod, okay? So those are terms that are gonna describe basically the strength of it, right? So, you know, if you're built like me, right? Went to the gym a few years ago, probably more of a heavy, right? So it's going to basically be like a big, strong arm. It's going to have a lot of backbone, a lot of power. If you're a scrawny little dude like Jeff, probably more of a medium, right? No, medium so, light. Medium light. I was trying to be nice, no, Jeff. I'm flirting with real. you here. Let's be real. This is live flirt. Only fans page coming soon. Yeah, pay attention. Okay. So now that that derailed pretty fast, that's basically what we're talking about, right? So in general terms, medium is going to be kind of like a just in between, kind of some strength, but also some give to it, right? Heavy is usually going to be all strength, very little give, right? Light is going to be all give, very little strength, right? And the in-betweens, your medium light, medium heavy are going to kind of be in between those. Now, all the rods are going to have some type of rating 
that the manufacturer suggests, right? So there's usually like a lure rating and a line rating on there. Now, these are general guidelines to what the manufacturer believes this rod is best for. Let me tell you something about lure ratings. All right. <laughs> Jeff and I have had plenty of uh, personal insight into some factories and how these ratings are determined. This is far from scientific, I would say. It's questionable. Is that the nice way to put it, Jeff? That would be the nicest way. So here's what I would recommend. Use the lure ratings as maybe a starting point, but you have to make up your own decision. I can't tell you how many of these things are, are done just by two dudes drinking beer, sitting around, tying stuff up and seeing how they bend and go, that seems about right, right? There it is, cut out of the bag. That's how a lot of this stuff is done. Some of it is done more scientific where they actually put it in machines and do deflection charts and see when it breaks and how it loads and all this kind of stuff. But you guys got to put stuff on, use it and see how it feels. In general terms, right? If we're trying to make this simple, usually you're trying to aim in between the low and the high, okay? So for instance, this one is what? Quarter to one ounce lure rating. Okay, so generally speaking, the sweet spot for this rod is gonna be in between those. It's gonna be three eighths to five eighths. That's gonna be where this rod is gonna shine. And I can tell you from using that, this rod a lot, it's exactly where it shines. This rod would kind of suck throwing something that weighed quarter ounce, because it's really fast, it doesn't load at all. There's no way in hell I would throw a one ounce bait on this. Even a three quarter is gonna really overload this thing, right? So you wanna to try to aim for the middle of those lure ratings. Now, as far as actions go, you are gonna hear things fast, moderate, parabolic, that kind of stuff. Okay, that's describing the action of the rod. So basically, if you have a seven foot rod here, right? If at some point this thing has to taper, right? It starts thicker and then it goes thinner and thinner and thinner to the end, right? So if this rod is real crisp, right? That's going to be fast, right? If it bends and then bounces back really fast, that's fast, okay? If I was to bend this and it responds is a little bit slower, that's going to be more of a moderate, right? It's a moderate action or a moderate taper. If it's going to bend really deep into the blank, so instead of it just being at the tip, right, it's going to kind of bend deeper into the blank and then kind of bend back. That's what's referring to being more of a parabolic action that it's kind of bending deep into the rod, okay? So the importance of that is usually the softer, the more parabolic or moderate the rod, the better it's gonna be for give and cushion. So generally speaking, it's treble hook baits, reaction baits, things where the fish might be hooked in weird places on the head, the mouth, outside. You need that rod to kind of give a little bit to land more of those fish. The faster the rod, generally speaking, the more sensitive it is because it's gonna bend less and your transfer of sensitivity is gonna happen quicker to your hands, right? So generally, bottom contact, jig, worm, that kind of stuff, you want a faster action rod. Okay, if you need a less expensive option. So, you know, C's AGS can set you back 550, right? So if you want something in a similar style rod, the St. Croix Victory, the 7.3 medium heavy fast action, is a good one. They call they nickname this rod the Marshall, right? And this is a you know similar action. It's going to have you know a relatively soft tip, but it's fast and it bounces back. It's a rod that was designed for doing a lot of different things: throwing a jig, throwing a worm, throwing a spinnerbait, all the stuff we just talked about for 199 bucks, right? Obviously, there is a huge difference in weight and performance and sensitivity between these two. But if you don't want to drop 550. This could be a really solid option for a super versatile rod. All right, number three, most versatile rods for me, Jeff. This is a rod that has been in my lineup ever since it was a thing, mm. okay? And with the new version of this, it's even more of a versatile option. And that is a G. Loomis 873CRR. Now, I like it in the NRX Plus because I'm bougie. And I think it's a huge difference between the NRX Plus versus the old NRX or GLX or whatever version you have. Now, the 873 CRR is a really confusing model for a lot of guys because in the Loomis rod, what that number means at 873, 
the 8'7", that's 87 inches. So that's the length, right? So seven foot three. The last number, that three, is generally the power. So in the Loomis scale, they do like a one through five scale. So a three is medium heavy. A two is medium, a four is heavy, right? So a lot of guys look at that and go, medium heavy, eh, right? Not heavy enough for what I need. But in this particular rod, in the CRR, which stands for Carolina rig rod, this would be a horrible Carolina rig rod, okay? I'm not a big Carolina rig fisherman anyways. I don't think anybody should do it. But if you guys are looking for an amazing Carolina rig rod, this isn't the one. I don't have <laughs> any idea how this ended up being a Carolina rig rod from the beginning because I don't know anybody that's actually ever used it as a Carolina rig rod. Watch, there's going to be 100 comments Seriously, now. I just upset yeah. the entire... Carolina rig forum. We're out of business now. Right? But what this rod is super dope at is this is kind of a like that last rod that we just talked about, but heavier, more versatile for high impact type stuff, right? So this is gonna be things like pitching the bank, you know, pitching a jig, skipping a dock, light duty flipping heavier jigs, maybe a, a half ounce football jig with a big trailer, a five eighths or even three quarter ounce football jig with a trailer. These types of things, maybe a weedless swim bait that you're gonna throw by a bush and you know, you're gonna need to really haul them out. This rod is super powerful. To me, it's much more of a heavy. No idea how this rating came to be. This is what we just talked about. Throw the rating out, don't worry about it. <laughs> this rod is sick. So if you guys find yourselves kind of pitching the bank with, you know, 18, 20, 22 pound line, right? Skipping docks, you're flipping bushes, that kind of stuff, and you don't need a true like eight foot, you know, punching rod or flipping stick. This rod is unbelievable. You're gonna use it a lot. Now, what makes this rod so versatile too is it has a relatively soft tip. It's got some give at the tip to it, right? So this aids in the pitching, right? It's gonna help load and give you really accurate cast. But because it has that tip, you can also use it for things like a buzz bait, a whopper plopper, uh, you know, a larger soft or larger hard plastic bait like a, a wake bait or something where you need a little more power, but you still need a little bit of a tip to kind of fling it, but then you want the rod to be really strong. This can be a great one. So it's a rod that is just incredibly versatile for me, really in the soft plastic jig realm. So if you find yourself and you fish in an area where you're always using, you know, different worms, different jigs, but it's in a heavier capacity, right? Heavier line, a little heavier cover. This one is super dope. And the other one that can, it's really neck and neck with this. And I, I, I don't know if I'm choosing one over the other, but I guess I kind of just did, right? So yeah, I guess I chose that one over this one. It was a toss up because this rod is just as dope. This is the 7.2 Heavy Steez AGS. So if you prefer, you know, Steez over Loomis, it's basically the same rod. It's got the soft tip and it's a heavy action rod and does everything well, right? So you can do so much with either one of these. You can't go wrong either way. So this is gonna be rod number three for more high impact jig and worm fishing. Now, if you need a less expensive option, super hard to beat the perfect pitch from Mega Bass. This has been a staple in their line for years and years and years. It's available in the Levante series at the 249 price point. It's available in the Orochi series at a 349 price point. It's very similar to these two rods. It's a 7.2 heavy action rod or heavy powered rod. And it's got this kind of lighter tip on it and then power on the back. So almost the same type of rod. I choose these two just because they're a little bougier, a little lighter, a little more sensitive, a little crisper. But if you didn't want to drop, you know, you're looking at 550 on the Steez, you're looking at 625 on the NRX. If you'd rather do 250, this is a very, very close rod. All right, rod number four. We're, there's basically a trend here, Jeff. We're going up in size, right? Okay. So this is the most versatile rod for me for heavier stuff, mm. okay? Now, this is probably a rod, I don't use this rod near as much as I use like the Mad Bull or any of those first three, basically, because those first three are gonna throw the majority of normal bass stuff, Yeah. right? This rod is gonna be the rod that's gonna have the most versatility for 
me for like paddle tail swim baits. Now I know you're a big swim bait guy and we could basically do this same type of episode with swim bait specific rods, right? For me and what I'm talking about with swim bait, I'm talking about things like a six inch mag draft, a mag draft freestyle, Big stuff. a five inch 316 rising sun, maybe a 4858 Kai Tech, a five inch spark shad, right? Baits that are going to be, you know, one and two ounce stuff, six inch citizens, that kind of stuff, right? Maybe it's a underspin with a swim bait on it. Maybe it's a light A rig. Right? These types of things that kind of live in that one, two ounce range where you kind of need a specialized rod. So for me, I think the most versatile rod in this category is this guy. This is the G. Loomis Conquest 905C MBR. Now, I'm not a big fan of MBR actions in Loomis. I just, to me, they're too medium. They're too mid, right? They're too middle of the road. They don't really do anything great. For me personally, a lot of guys love them, but the 905 is kind of the exception to that. This rod does everything so good. And it's got a crazy lure rating. It's three quarter to three ounce. And usually with a rod like this, you know, when it's that big of a lure rating, it's usually either really good at the three quarter or it's really good at the three ounce. And it's not great on both spectrums, but this rod is pretty great at both spectrums, right? So. You know, again, I could use this rod as a flipping rod. I could use this rod as a heavy jig rod, similar to what we just talked about with the 873. But what this rod can do better than those other ones is, you know, it can be a light duty punching rod, right? But really for me, it's a big swim jig, a big swim bait, it's a moving bait rod. The MBRs want to be loaded to get the sensitivity on them, right? So this is a rod that is going to always be under load for me. So it basically has a mag draft or a swim jig living on it at all times for me. It's got tons of power, lots of versatility. It's super dope. Now, I was torn between that one or this guy, because this is a rod that I find myself using all the time. This is the TS Destroyer Poker. So it's a 7.2 and again, it's a half ounce to three ounce rod. So this rod is very similar in technique, but I find that I, I pigeonhole this rod a little bit more as a frog rod now. When I, when I first started, I've been using this rod since it's been a rod. And when I first started using this rod, this was my swim bait rod. This was my mag draft rod and my you know 316 rod and, and everything we just talked about on the Conquest. But since Conquest has come out, it's kind of replaced this rod for all that. This rod is still amazing at all those things, but really I've kind of pigeonholed this more now as like my true frog rod. And if I'm kind of pitching around, I like that 873 or that Steez better. So that's why this didn't come into play, but this could also be an exceptional rod. So if you wanted to stay in a mega bass lane or something with a little bit more JDM styling, this can do everything that Conquest can do as well. So this would be a great one. Now, if you wanted to not spend $600 again, right? So you're $599 on that Mega Bass, you're above $700 on the Conquest, right? For $249, you can get yourself the Evergreen, we call it the ND180 rod, but it's it's been renamed to the Wake Bait rod. So it's the 7.8 extra heavy. Now, even though it's 7.8, this is a rod that fishes a lot like a 7.475 rod. It doesn't feel like a really long rod. It's got all the same versatility. So half to four ounce lure rating, right? Which is a crazy lure rating. I can attest, this is one of Griff's favorite rods. He's always throwing this rod. I have seen him throw everything on this rod from, you know, a big rat to a glide bait to a big crawler, all the way down to a gong to a, like a mid diving crankbait. Like he was throwing a blitz on it the other day. Like it's literally one of those rods that you can do so much on and it's all because it's got the right actions obviously an extra heavy in power but because it's got this softness up at the tip it allows you to throw the lighter baits as well so it's a really good great versatile rod for that heavier stuff without breaking the bank all right and finally jeff we have to have a spinning you have to option this right? is your number one rod this Ooh, was joking. this was the easiest one <laughs> to decide so a rod i literally talk about 47 times a day 
the destroyer P five yeah. windbuster. The windbuster. Could you? Did you uh, see who that saw coming? That coming? Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Am I that predictable? <laughs> so, you know, here's a scoop. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about this a million times. If you're going to own one spinning rod and you want to splurge, just do yourself a favor and get this combo. Okay? There's nothing like this. If you really want to splurge, do it exactly like this. Windbuster exists. Right? If you don't want to be that ridiculous, Windbuster, Kage MQ, you know, uh, Ballistic MQ, any of those would be great on there. But here's the scoop with the Windbuster. The Windbuster was designed as a hard bait rod. It was designed in Japan for giving anglers a rod that they could throw a jerk bait, a crank bait, traditionally difficult hard baits to toss into the wind, right? We've all been there. We've been fishing down the bank, you know, we're, we're in a groove, we're casting great, and then we turn a corner and the wind's right at our face and we go to throw our jerk bait or our crank bait and it's just, and our reels fluff and, you know, you throw it down, you pick up another one, fluff it again, right? So the idea was that you could do that, you could turn the corner, see the wind, use your brain and be like, okay, I'm gonna put this bait caster down, I'm gonna pick up my wind buster and be able to toss and fish and have the same power and same strength that you had in your bait caster. Now, it does all of that really, really well. But the special thing about the Windbuster, something happened in production. I don't know what it is. I don't even care what it is. This rod is crazy sensitive. So this has turned into our bottom contact rod of choice now for spinning. So free rig, shaky head, wacky rig, heavier Neko rig, drop shot, heavier drop shot, right? If you guys are throwing quarter and three eighth ounce, heavier line, seven, eight pound weedless presentation. It's amazing at all of that. And that's basically what lives on my Windbuster is my bottom contact. The reason why it's the most versatile is because if I cut that off and throw a jerk bait on there or throw a crankbait on there, that's what it was actually designed for. And it can do it great. And it bends deep into the blank exactly the way you'd want. But unlike most rods that are designed for hard baits, that those are like too whippy and too soft. This rod isn't, it's the opposite. It's like really crisp, really sharp, and your sensitivity on the bottom is through the roof. So, you know, just to spec it out for you guys, it's an F three and a half, seven, two. So it's seven, two quarter ounce to five eighths ounce. I find quarter, really three eighths and a half is where this rod shines. So, you know, that could be a quarter ounce weight plus a worm, perfect on this. Three eighth ounce plus a worm, perfect on this. Half ounce hard bait, like half ounce jerk bait, like an E-Division 110, you know, or a mid diving crank bait perfect on this. So, you know, that's a lot of what we throw. That's why it gets the nod. So, you know, I love all of these rods, but everybody needs a special spinning rod in their arsenal. That's why I just can't say enough great things about this. So number one, by a long way in versatility, the Windbuster. Now, if you just want to save some bucks, okay, a less expensive option, that would also be, in my realm, a really versatile rod would be the Orochi Enforcer. Now, this rod gets overlooked a lot because it's long. It's 7.4, but it's got the same exact lure rating as the Windbuster. It's quarter to five eighths, right? It's essentially, it's a very similar taper, actually. It's got a little softer tip because of the length, so those extra two inches are basically all the tip, but then it's nice and powerful down here. I just prefer a little longer spinning rod in terms when we're talking about versatility. But here's the thing, I would never talk anybody out of this rod because they're, the Enforcer's dope, right? And they make the Enforcer in Levante as well if you want to go down to 249. Here's the thing, the Windbuster's only 475. So the difference here between that and these is massive, right? Some of these rods, there's not a huge difference. Like we were talking about, you know, the perfect pitch versus the 873 NRX Plus, right? You, you can't get used to the 873 and then go backwards. But if you're not used to the 873 yet, there's not a huge difference for that extra $350, $400. But here, there's a huge difference for the extra $125 between Orochi and Destroyer. So, you know, whatever you guys need to do, obviously do. But if you're looking for the ultimate, do everything most versatile spinning rod, Windbuster takes the cake. All right, guys. That is a wrap. There's a deep dive into the most versatile rods in 
my lineup. What do you think, Jeff? You've used a lot of these rods fishing with me. Did I leave anything out, or I think do you, you think... nailed it. Basically, all those rods, like those five rods, and you're so set on literally any conditions, any type of bite you find, like you're so good. I mean, my favorite's that Mad Bull. Uh, it's just dumb how you can throw so many different things on it. Like but, you know us, we like yeah. reaction stuff. Yeah. So it's like cool. They're eating a buzzbait in the morning. Cool. I'll just throw it on this. Oh, right. they're eating a crankbait now. Cool. I got a mad bull. You know, it's like it's insane. Well, and a lot of times you and I are fishing together, and we catch a fish and we're holding it up on camera, and then you're like, "What rod is that?" And I go, "Mad bull." And you're like, "Of course it's of the course mad bull." Like mad it bull. seems like that's kind of a, a trend in a lot of <laughs> yeah. this, right? So you know, we all find our favorites. And every once in a while, a manufacturer just, they build something and it just, you know, sometimes they build these amazing niche products that are perfect for these one or two, you know, techniques. And other times they just happen to make magic yeah. and they turn into rods that just shine at so many different things. And those are just not only important rods to have, especially if you're limited on space, but they're really fun rods because when you can use one rod for so many different things, you kind of become intimate with it a little bit. Like you learn all the little like intricacies, right? What it can do, what it can't do, where to bend, where to, you know what I mean? And so that kind of makes it fun too because it just builds your confidence up a lot. So I, I really enjoy rods that can do so many different things. So anyways, if you guys have any questions on anything we've covered, drop it down below in the comments and I will definitely get to it. I'd also love to hear, you know, what your favorite all-around rods are. What are your favorite most versatile rods? Drop it down below too so we can all, you know, share collectively and grow as a community. So on behalf of myself and Jeff and Carmen and John, Ethan, everybody around this place, guys, thanks for the time. Thank you for your business. Jeff will leave links down below if you want to check any of these rods out closer. And until next time, happy fishing. Have a good time, guys.